As we continue our little journey through the yearbooks of yesteryear for the Fort Charon High School, no student yearbook would be complete without giving recognition to their music department. In the very early 1900s, they didn't have any organized music such as choirs. They did have music in their uh, plays, uh, in their drama department. And of course, they had music at their dances, but nothing that was organized. And these photographs here are from a musical comedy at Porter and High School. In the 1920s, they started to have glee clubs. And here you see a couple uh, photographs of the glee clubs. The first one uh, on the top there, you can see, is the House Glee Club. And we'll, we'll talk more about uh, the house. Actually, that was a, a part of the government body of the uh, Orchard and High School. But like I say, we'll get into that later, along with the Senate. But uh, the House uh, Glee Club, and then also uh, below that, the Girls Glee Club. There were no choir robes, but eventually they did go to a uniform, as you can see in these photographs here. This is the Boys Glee Club and the Girls Glee Club. And as the years went by, the Glee Club got more and more students uh, to participate. You can see that they're, they're larger groups now. Of course, there was always more girls and boys involved. And the music group continued to grow until they had a group this large. This was taken in 1917. It still wasn't called a choir. And it wasn't called a glee club. It was now called a chorus. The first choir photograph I found was in 1934. This is complete with choir robes. In the yearbook date of 1938, we see this. It shows both the choir and the chorus. And the only difference I can see between them, other than one's wearing gowns and one isn't, is it says one was at a different time period uh, for practice, and the other one uh, was a later time period. And the other uh, difference was that the chorus sang secular songs. In this year book, we see that they show the choir, they show the chorus, but they also added something else here, and that is a verse-speaking choir. Now, if you're not sure what a verse-speaking choir is, and I wasn't, I checked YouTube to see if I could find anything, and I did have one verse-speaking choir. I'll give you a little taste of what it was. Well, I think you get the idea. They had the verse speaking choir in several of your books and then it stopped. And they just had the traditional choirs. In this yearbook from the 1950s, you see this traditional choirs there. But it's kind of ironic because now they have a girls chorus and a boys chorus, which is kind of where it started out at with the boys glee club and the girls glee club. As I went through the more current yearbooks, I couldn't even find anything that resembled uh, the old uh, style choir pictures. They had more of uh, interaction on separate snapshots and photographs of perhaps people in the choir, uh, but not the choir per se. Even the vocal part of the music program and going to the instrument part, we find that the early bands in the early 1900s, I mean, I say early bands, there were no bands, but they had were orchestras. So just let's look at some of these orchestras that they had in the yearbooks. 
one you're looking at now is in 1917. You see they now have two different groups, the orchestra and the band. However, the uh, photograph here shows the both of them together. This photograph in the yearbook shows the first band that had uniforms, and this was in 1927. And that's the director in the upper right-hand corner. Two years later, in 1929, you see this photograph of the band, and I found this extremely interesting because of the uh, the big bass drum that sits front and center. Not too unusual to see Porcher in high school on the drum, but it is kind of unusual to see a very large K on the drum. My best guess is the K represents the Kiwanis Club, and that's who actually paid for the band uniforms. There were other bands at the high school. This one here in 1938 is their harmonica band which is kind of unusual. But what's really unusual in 1938, that this yearbook had a uh, holder for a DVD that actually had the band playing on it. And I'm gonna play it for you now. history humor. And as the years went by, the Port Huron Band grew in size and also quality of sound. It has become one of the finest bands in Michigan right now. Boy, doesn't color make a difference in these yearbooks? This band uniforms really stand out. Here's something I never thought I'd see in a Port Huron High School yearbook. Fight on for Northern High School. Raise high the gold and blue. What's going on here? Well, I guess you have to look over here underneath the band director's uh, picture, Clarence Wade, and see what it says. Mr. Clarence Wade, band director of the combined bands of Port Huron and Port Huron Northern High School. He has been directing bands in Port Huron for 14 years. So I guess that answers that question. Later issues of the yearbook, uh, again, similar to what happened to the choir, they don't show an official band uh, photograph. They just show more snapshots of the band in different situations. When I was looking through the more recent yearbooks, I was surprised to see that they devoted uh, several pages sometimes to the national news. In this one here, uh, they're uh, looking at Watergate. This one has the O.J. Simpson trial in it. This yearbook page featured the assault on Nancy Kerrigan. And here we have the JFK Jr. wedding. And here we see them celebrating the fact that John Clem went into space 36 years after the original time he went into space to be the first American to to orbit the Earth. And a couple of yearbooks even had local news. Here we see the 1986-87 uh, uh, erosion of Lakeside Beach, where it took away pretty much the whole beach as well as some of the road. And in this 1995 yearbook, it reminded us of the violence uh, that occurred at uh, Porcher and High School. And it says this, the violence started on Tuesday, August 30th. This was a day that will remain in the minds of the Port Huron High School students. Two roofers had an argument and the foreman broke it up. One of the men got his gun and killed the foreman. 
The violence continued with a fight that started with two people and ended up with two large groups fighting. This violence has caused some to question what is going on. I said earlier that the earlier yearbooks didn't have this kind of news in their yearbooks, and they didn't. But there is uh, this copy of the Lighthouse uh, newspaper, and this was important enough for them to put it on their front page. This is when Hoover was elected president, so that was a long time ago. I think most of us have very pleasant memories of the homecoming games that were at the Memorial Stadiums and the queen that was crowned uh, for that homecoming. I was surprised to find out that the queen uh, didn't actually start until the early 1950s. This is the first one I saw in the yearbook, and this was in 1953. The queen was always called the queen, but the fellow that was with her, well, he was called different things. Here he was called an escort. Here he was called a king. And in this photograph here, he was called a prime minister. Go figure. And who would have thought you'd ever see this? Not one queen, but two. They were co-queens. All right, now I want to look at a few odds and ends I found in different books I thought was interesting. And this first one here is uh, showing a spanker machine. In this illustration, we have the principal standing up with his hands outstretched. We have a couple of members of the faculty there uh, operating, uh, one operating the machine and the other one holding the student down. And then we have the actual spanking machine. It's that wheel with the spokes and every spoke gave the, gave the student a paddle. Pretty interesting concept, I think. And they even wrote a poem about it. And in this 1951 yearbook, it was showing uh, the female student, well, and the male too, in pinup poses. Goodness, this would have never went to print in the early 1900s and would have been banned from the, the shelf support yarn. How times change. Today, that seems almost modest. You didn't see any of this in the early yearbooks either. Big Red Show Love. Speaking of love, in this yearbook, we actually had a photograph of the young man proposing to the young lady. Here's something I thought was interesting, girls' wood shop. I think that's a great idea. I think girls should have that. I think boys should also have a cooking class. I had a cooking class in the ninth grade. And because of the training and the nurturing I got in that class, it made me into the terrible cook I am today. But it was fun. Here's something you won't see today. Christian Courier Club that's sponsored by the school system. Nope, sadly, not anymore. Here's something I wasn't aware of. Students can now get varsity letters for academic excellence. They didn't have that when I was going to school. Not that I would have got one, but it would have been nice to dream about it. All right, join me in my next video and we'll see if we can wrap up this yearbook project.